guys, as part of my year of rereading for 2021, I'm going to be talking about Titanic the Long Night and Remembering the Titanic by Diane Ho. Titanic The Long Night and Remembering the Titanic by Diane Ho follows a group of characters from different walks of life as they board the Titanic and endure the tragic sinking of a ship many claimed was unsinkable. For those who survive, they have to face the struggles of surviving when others did not and discover the hopes and possibilities that the future holds. So, as I mentioned at the very beginning of this video, uh, both of these books, they are a duology. They do go together. It is best to read them together. Um, this duology is part of my year of rereading for 2021. Um, I have not reread this duology in years, you guys. Um, the last time I, I probably read this series, yeah, Goodreads was definitely not a thing. Um, when, when was Goodreads even created? Maybe about 2010, something like that? Because I, I definitely started my account in 2011, and I feel like Goodreads hadn't been around for that long. So, yeah, I have never documented these books on my Goodreads channel. Um, my best estimate because I was kind of thinking about it. My best estimate about when I possibly could have last read these books was maybe 2003. You know, anywhere from 2001 to 2003, I want to say, but I could be wrong. Um, so yeah, either way, it's been a very long time since I've read this duology. Um, they, the duology, both books were published in 1998. Um, there was like just maybe a couple months difference, you know, like the first one was published like early in the year and then the second one was published like maybe sometime in the middle or end of the year. So they both came out in 1998. Um, so I, I would have been a, what, a teenager? Something like that or a preteen? I guess more like a preteen. Um, I would have been in about about fifth or sixth grade. I'm trying to remember. I would have been in about fifth or sixth grade, let's put it that way, um, when this duology came out. Um, and I, I, I just adored this duology, you yeah, guys. Um, I've mentioned this before, you know, when I was younger, I didn't own very many books as I do now, so the few books that I had, I would constantly reread over and over again, and yeah, this duology, uh, this was practically like a prized possession for me, <laughs> and yeah, I mean, I think you can tell that, I mean, if I was to put this book closer to the screen, yeah, this, this book is about to fall apart, you guys. That's how many times I reread this series, because this cover is about to fall apart, the spine is severely broken, I'm worried about pages just coming, flying right on out. Um, so yeah, I love this duology. So as I've been doing for my year of rereading, I'm going to be sharing with you guys five reasons why I love these books. First up, if you were part of Leonardo DiCaprio mania, these books are for you. <laughs> so what do I mean by that? Uh, obviously, the James Cameron Titanic movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet, that was released back in, what, very late 1997. Um, that movie, there was a lot of hysteria. And a lot of the hysteria, sometimes it wasn't particularly so much about the movie, it was really about Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> and like I mentioned, I was probably in about 5th or 6th grade when that movie came out, and uh, I was there for Leonardo DiCaprio mania. I, I was going through that phase, Leonardo DiCaprio, he was the hot cute thing at that time. Uh, I had posters of him on my walls, I got all the magazines that he was on the cover of. So that was me during that time period. So I was, I was freaking obsessed with not only Titanic, but I was obsessed with Leonardo DiCaprio as well, you guys. So, um, this duology, it's like it kind of came out right there at that perfect time to really capitalize on, hey, this is for all the little girls, little preteen girls and everything that are so obsessed with Leonardo DiCaprio right now. And yeah, that was me. That was one of those. I was one of those people. So of course I saw this book and I was like, oh, I must get that. <laughs> 
Um, so, so just to kind of make a note here, because I was looking through Goodreads, because I've never seen anybody else talk about these books. I've never heard of anybody else other than me having read these books. Uh, I was just kind of curious to see some other Goodreads reviews, and I was happy to see that there were some Goodreads reviews up for these books. Um, I did see a lot of people mentioning that this duology especially this first book, because this first book is primarily on the Titanic, because the second book is more the aftermath of the Titanic. But yeah, this first book specifically, a lot of people talking about, oh, this is just a ripoff of the movie. And okay, in some ways this is a bit of a rip ripoff, because there are some things that happen in this book that are very, very, very eerily similar. The thing is, though, I mean, you've got to think about the world of book publishing. Okay, this is how I thought about it. Um, the movie came out late 1997. Like I said, these two books were published in 1998. This first one was like definitely early 1998. So when would Diane Ho had time to plagiarize the movie? if that makes sense. Um, there's no time there. You got to think about the world of publishing that it takes a while to publish a book. You got to go through all of those obstacles before your book even gets published. You know what I mean? There's so much you have to do. So I don't see how there would have been any sort of time for Diane Ho to be influenced in any sort of way by the movie, if that makes sense. Um, there's just absolutely no way. I think some of the similarities, I think it's all just purely coincidental. Um, I mean, it, it's the Titanic. There's only so many things your characters can kind of do on the Titanic, if that makes sense. Um, because if you've watched other movies or television miniseries or even other books that are on the Titanic, you know, a lot of times some of the plot points, some of the characters are kind of similar. I think it's kind of difficult to do something very, very different and unique. You, When it comes to the Titanic, you do kind of got to think out of the box a little bit because um, there's only so many things that people can get up to on the ship because you are the story is running on a very tight timeline you know um, before you do get to the sinking of the ship um, so yeah like I mentioned uh, in some ways this this first book it can almost be like a ripoff of a movie in, in a weird sort of way but as I mentioned the timing f between late 1997 to this first book being published in very early 1998, I don't think there's any time that Diane Ho would have been like, oh, I'm going to plagiarize this, I'm going to be influenced by that. Uh, it makes no sense to me. So, as I mentioned, since this is a reread for me, the very good thing, yeah guys, thank God, this duology still held my interest during my reread. Thank God. God. Um, as I mentioned, the last time I read this duology was perhaps way back in very, very early 2000s, if I'm remembering correctly. So, you know, my tastes in books have changed over time. I read books differently. I, I read characters differently. You know, I have a better grasp and understanding of, y you know, literary concepts and themes and whatnot. So I, I was, I was very concerned heading into my reread that I would not enjoy this duology um, but because I was worried I was going to kind of head into it and it would just feel more like nostalgia, I suppose. And I do think there is an element of that because this duology is an element of my childhood in some ways. So there is definitely that sense of nostalgia that's influencing my enjoyment, but at the same time, I was concerned, like, oh lord, is this, is this gonna read as terribly written? Is it gonna read as chill, as, as cheesy? Uh, am I not gonna like these characters, you know? So fortunately, the good thing for my, my reread, um, I do think these books held up, thank god, I still really enjoyed them. And here's the weird thing, you guys. I'm a lover of historical fiction. I do love all things when it comes to the Titanic. And over the years, since I last read this duology, uh, I've read a lot of other books, historical fiction books, that take place on the Titanic. And the weird thing is, 
I think this duology is still my favorite historical fiction when it comes to the Titanic. Uh, because some of the other books, I don't know what it is, there's just some of the other books that they can be a little slow and boring and it is, I don't know, I'm not quite sure what it is. It, it might just be, because this first book especially, you know, there's, I think there's just a, a very in-your-face honesty and simplicity with the nature of this story that I, that perhaps maybe other Titanic books are lacking, if that makes sense, I don't know. So, moving on to the third reason why I love this duology, uh, the fact that there's some great themes and issues explored in this duology that I was not really expecting because I kind of didn't really pay attention to those things when I was reading it for the first time back when I was like I said back when I was in like fifth or sixth grade um I am now now I'm a I'm a grown woman in my 30s I majored I, I or yeah I majored I got a bachelor's degree in English um so yeah that entire time I was in college I I you know I learned more about literary concepts and and th things like that, you know, that influence how I read now. Um, so yeah, back when I was in fifth and sixth grade, you know, there were a lot of things like that that really f flew over my head that I wasn't paying attention to. Um, you know, what I was primarily paying attention to with this first book was definitely, oh, the, the love story between the characters and the tragedy and the drama, you know. Um, but yeah, my my reread, I, I definitely just, like I said, I, I just really had a great reread of this duology, you guys, and there were a lot of things that I appreciated more in, in hindsight now that I'm a grown woman. So yeah, three of the big things that, while I was reading this duology, three of the big things that really stuck out to me that just real, I really grasped onto now as a grown woman, um, some of the big themes explored were definitely um, class politics, feminism, and PTSD. So yeah, talking first about the class politics, um, anybody who knows anything about the Titanic, there was definitely some class politics going on because we all know first class, you know, as the ship is sinking, first class, they got first go at the lifeboats. In the meantime, third class, they were trapped down in third class where water is rising up and they can't even get through the barriers, you know? They can't even get through the freaking doors. They're locked down there in third class and a good majority of third class died. There was barely any survivors of third class, but hey, good portion of first class lived. So, um, this book, there's, you definitely get that, you know, Diane Ho definitely does a fantastic job of exploring those class politics, you know, exploring those huge differences between first and third class, and it, and it is, it's not just the lifeboats, you know, when the boat is sinking, it's stuff even before that that's going on. Um, yeah, there's a great part in this first book that, that I love. It, it's, it's so cringy, you know, but it's a great example of the class politics. Um, because there's a, there's a tour that happens, like the, the, the day one of, of the, of the, you know, traveling. Day one, there's a tour guide who takes a group of first class passengers down to third class so they can go have a look and gawk pretty much at the third class passengers. And yeah, the first class passengers are like, oh, wow, they sh these people should be grateful. I mean, look at their accommodations, you know? And it's like they're looking at third class like, like zoo animals, you know? And then, yeah, the third class passengers are mean, they're meanwhile like, hey, uh, why, why don't we get a tour of first class? You know, they get a tour. The first class gets a tour down here, but why can't we get a You know, so I mean, that's a great moment, you know, of showing those class politics. And another way that Diane Ho explores some of the class differences, um, you, because you do, you have, you pretty much have four major characters in this novel, but you do kind of primarily focus on two women. Um, there's a, there's a young woman in first class named Elizabeth. And then there's a young woman in third class named Katie. 
So uh, Diana Ho does a great job of kind of balancing out that narrative perspective um, and how Elizabeth and Katie view, view themselves and view each other. Because each girl, each girl feels trapped in their situation, trapped in their circumstances. And they look at the other like, oh, they have it so much better than me. Because, um, like, for example, Elizabeth, like I said, she's a first-class passenger. But that's just it. Because of her wealth and privilege and whatnot, she's kind of trapped in that in some ways. She's expected to marry young and marry well and not even have a job, you know? The thought of a career and independence is not a thing for a woman of wealth like that. So yeah, when she sees someone like Katie, Katie who is a third class passenger and she's she's poor and she doesn't have as many nice clothes and nice things like Elizabeth does, but Elizabeth looks at someone like Katie and thinks, wow, uh, that's someone who, you know, they have freedom. You know, they have freedom and independence and I don't. So, but then Katie, Katie is also the same way. She looks at Elizabeth thinking, oh wow, it must be great being so wealthy and uh, doing this and that, you know, and she, but yeah, she doesn't know some of the struggles that Elizabeth has to face. And that's just it. They both don't understand the, the struggles that each person has to make, you know. Um, so I, I do, I love that balance because each girl, there, there is, there's pros and cons to the situation that both these girls are in, if that makes sense. And once again, that definitely does lead into one of the next themes, you know, uh, there's, there's definitely a feminist aspect presented in this uh, book, especially with Elizabeth and Katie, um, because either way, what is holding both these women back is, that's just it, they're gender, they're both young women. It doesn't matter whether they're wealthy or poor, they're still women <laughs> during this time period. And either way, during this time period, no matter your social standing, a woman is expected to, to marry well and have children and, yeah, no career for you. So uh, I definitely love that whole thing as well. And then the third thing that I mentioned, because yeah, I've, I've gone through the class politics, I've gone through the feminist narrative, and yeah, the third thing is uh, PTSD is explored. And that's where you get into book two, book two primarily. Um, because like I mentioned, book one, all Titanic the entire voyage of the Titanic. But book two takes place like a year after the sinking. So it's the aftermath of the sinking and what the characters are are facing now, what they're struggling with. And yeah, one of, like I mentioned, one of the big things is this whole idea of, you know, PTSD. Um, your four primary characters, um, each character is struggling in a very different way. You have a character who's facing survivor's guilt. Uh, a loved one didn't make it, but they did. So yeah, survivor's guilt. Another character is facing some claustrophobia because they were kind of stuck down in, you know, the twisting, winding passages of the ship while it's going down and they're trying to figure out, well, how do I get out? Another character is facing nightmares after they were stuck in a lifeboat for hours and hours on the freezing ocean and, you know, kind of that uncertainty of are, are we even going to be rescued or are we going to die out here and freeze to death as well? And then another character is facing the issue that they were in the water as the ship went down and they, they did, they about froze to death and they faced nightmares of kind of remembering what happened there and yeah, were they going to die as well? So I do, I, I think, I think for both books, all of those issues, you know, the class politics, the feminism aspect, uh, the, the, the trauma and demons and struggles that the characters are facing after the fact. Um, I think all of that is explored very well, very delicately. The fourth reason that I love this duology, the characters. I really just love and adore these characters. Uh, these characters are not the most fleshed out of characters, let's be real. Um, they, they can sometimes almost be a little one-dimensional in some ways, but I do think they have their moments of, of depth, uh, if you will. Um, but yeah, I do. I just really like these characters. I think they're all likable and enjoyable. 
no one gets on my nerves. <laughs> and the issues that they all have, you know, their own inner issues, it's like they all have great motives, you know, for feeling the way that they do. And what's great too about, because like I mentioned, you have four main characters. What's great about each of your four main characters, they all come from just a very different background, you know, a different way of life. As I already mentioned, you have Elizabeth, who's a first class passenger, but yeah, she's a young woman and she she doesn't want to get married yet. She really dreams of going off to college and whatnot before she gets married. Um, yeah, she dreams of freedom and independence. Um, and then your other main character, as I already mentioned, you have Katie, who's a third class passenger. And yeah, she's going to America to try to um, you know, start a new life. And she really wants to be like a, a singer and whatnot. That's her big dream is to become a singer. Um, and then you have... Um, your other main character is Max. He's a first class passenger. Um, he's been living in Paris. Um, uh, Elizabeth initially thinks he's, you know, a third class passenger by mistake, but to her embarrassment, he's actually a first class passenger. But yeah, he's been living in Paris, you know, kind of almost being like a struggling artist. And that's kind of his thing. He wants to make a living for himself rather than taking the money from his very wealthy mother and father. He wants to make his own money, have his own sense of freedom and independence as well. And then your other fourth main character, um, his name is Patty, and yeah, he's traveling on the Titanic with his older brother, Brian, and yeah, both brothers are traveling together um, in third class with Katie, accompanying her to America. And yeah, Patty especially, he wants to um, he wants to be a writer, Brian wants to be a farmer, and yeah, they think America's, you know, it's, it's holding all this great promise and opportunity for the both of them. And of course, these books, there's definitely, you know, romance elements to them, because Max and Elizabeth have a thing, and then Katie and Patty have a thing. So, I did. I love all the couples, I love all the characters, it's great. <laughs> And my fifth favorite reason why I love this series is it goes kind of to the second book. I've already mentioned this about this second book. Um, this second book explores the aftermath of the Titanic. And there's not too much historical fiction that explores the aftermath of the Titanic. I think in recent years that's been a bit more of a popular topic because um, I, I kind of already mentioned this as well earlier. You know, there's only so much you can do on the actual Titanic. You have a timeline and you have a deadline when it comes to the Titanic. And there is, there's only so much you can accomplish and do with your narrative and your characters. So sometimes after a while, historical fiction about the, about the Titanic feels very uh, repetitive and monotonous sometimes. So yeah, when I first read this second book way back in the day, I mean, I was just kind of blown away like, oh wow, a book about the aftermath of the Titanic and what the survivors are going through, you know? Um, and I love that. I really liked what this book is doing, you know, taking place a year after the fact, what everyone's struggling with, where their lives are at currently, and yeah, who's achieving their dreams and who's not, who's struggling, who's thriving. Um, it's all very fascinating and interesting. And I feel like book two is where you get a better sense of the characters as well, um, where they become a little bit more fleshed out, because there is that time now to, to develop them as characters. Because, yeah, book one is so much about the sinking of the Titanic, and there's only so much character development that can, that can squeeze in there, because then you do, you get the crisis of the ship sinking, and you gotta focus on that, you know, in the last chunk of the book. So, yeah, where you really learn more about the characters and, you know, their personalities, I feel like, they, they do, they kind of get out of that one dimension, one dimensionality, if that's a word, and they do become a lot more fleshed out characters in the second book, I think. So, you guys, that is it for my, my thoughts on my rereading of uh, this Titanic duology. I freaking loved my reread, yeah guys. When I first was like doing my written review for these books, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna have very much to say. Uh, but I did. I ended up having a lot more to say about this duology than I realized, which I guess is a is a good thing, you know? I guess it's better to have a, a longer video than a, a, a short video that doesn't have no substance to it, I suppose. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I love this reread. It was nice to go back to to some books that were part of my, my childhood, essentially. Um, 
and, and I did. I loved every moment of it. I'm sad that I'm done with this reread. I would definitely love to revisit these books sometime in, in the far future, perhaps. <laughs> but yeah, you guys, that's it for my review. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.